If it's free, then you're the product is the main take when it comes to free VPNs and it almost always checks out. I mean, throwback to almost 10 years ago when Facebook bought Onevo and offered this sus free Facebook VPN that literally was just to invade people's privacy. But with all that said, I actually fight back on the if it's free, you're the product mentality a little bit. Technically five free VPNs that I do personally trust and I'll explain why and how you can make a more educated decision if something is good, free, or bad free. Now before jumping into these VPNs, I did want to give a quick shout out to our brand new video sponsor, Tutanota, who's an open source privacy respecting email provider, passionate about keeping your emails protected. I love what they do and I'm so glad they chose to sponsor us. They're pushing the envelope on email safety and, and encryption, privacy respecting metadata, and have entirely open source clients everywhere, even F-Droid. I adore what they're doing, especially since they run on renewable energy. So thank you, Tuda, for the support and you can check out more information about them down below. So the first option is pretty much Rise Up and Calyx. Now they both kind of run on the same technology and fall into a similar boat of being this free and open source VPN that runs also on a technology called Leap, which tries to even give transparency on the server end, which is really rare for free VPNs, if not any VPNs. In fact, I know very few VPNs that try to accomplish anything similar to this. And so these are free VPNs that are brought to you by these amazing projects that have dedicated themselves to privacy advocacy for years. They both have extremely limited server options. In fact, when I used these, they were painfully slow to use, sometimes even slower than Tor but they are technically free VPNs run by pretty much open source privacy respecting uh, organizations who have done nothing but countless times prove that they are out there to protect you. And there's been no reason on my end to think these aren't completely trusted services. In fact, they're even more transparent than a lot of paid VPNs. It just comes at the cost of these are pretty much volunteer run services. But they're honestly fantastic. So I do recommend checking out Rise Up and Calyx. If you don't like their VPN, they both offer tons of other awesome projects um, that I'm a huge fan of. So to summarize this, uh, something can be free because it's run by some kind of organization that has other revenue models and they're able to offset and pretty much offer offer a free VPN as just free volunteer service. So again, it's a bit nuanced. Up next, this one's a little easier to try to identify this type of VPN and it's a uh, Winscribe. So Winscribe has a fairly limited free plan, but it does have a free plan and Winscribe is a paid VPN provider, but they do have limited bandwidth on their free plan. The cool thing about Winscribe is uh, it's literally the same thing as Pro, you're just limited on bandwidth. So you still have access to all the normal stuff that you would normally get on their normal plan. You just can only download a certain amount per month. And so this might be great for like a free mobile VPN, something that you're gonna use on the go, if you don't use much data on your phone or something like that, or you're literally just trying to test out Winscribe. They have a really solid track record when it comes to protecting user privacy and security. And when they've had issues in the past, they were able to address them very well, better than almost any other VPN I've seen. And so so yeah, when they offer a free plan, they're very transparent about why it's free and how it's free. And of course, from a business perspective too, these companies uh, want to limit you on the free plan so that you upgrade and become a paid customer. So yeah, it's kind of like a freemium plan. And actually the next option is Proton VPN that runs very similarly, but it's a different structure. So with Proton VPN, the free plan is unlimited which is really cool, but they limit you on feature set and the servers you can connect. And there are a few other limitations. And so Proton VPN free is personally something I could use with the expense of it being quite a bit slower than what I would get with uh, the more expensive paid version. And so both Winscribe and Proton VPN fall in a similar boat here of they have paid subscribers and they want you to upgrade to a paid subscription, but they do offer that free experience to A, probably give back to the community a little bit, but more importantly, they want to try to convert those free subscribers over time to paid subscribers. And I feel like it's kind of a good cycling method where someone can try it out for free and eventually they upgrade. And then once they upgrade, other people can join the free plan and it keeps continuing over time. So it makes a lot of sense to me. Proton VPN has the benefit, actually Winscrub as well, of all having open source clients too. So these are both some of the best VPNs VPNs you can get on the market. In fact, if you look at our VPN chart at techler.tech slash VPN, this is all an open source chart with just data on it. Um, if you look at the data points, you'll see why uh, and how Winscribe and Proton are pushing the envelope when it comes to VPN transparency. Now, the fifth one is kind of a cheat option. Uh, because it's not technically a VPN, but you can make it function as a VPN. And it's the Tor network. Tor is this open source network where it's gonna route your internet traffic across multiple, uh, to simplify this, proxies around the world to try to anonymize your internet traffic. Now, Tor is not a VPN. Uh, there's a big difference between the two of them, and it's 
Definitely a topic for another video, but Tor, generally speaking, is going to appeal to higher threat models and is going to give you more protection than a VPN will, as it's going to take out the need to trust a centralized party. With that said, there are implementations of the Tor network that can function similar to VPNs on your system. For example, on both iOS and Android, there is an app called Orbot, and Orbot allows you to connect to the Tor network from your mobile device using the VPN slot. And so you're pretty much gonna have a full system-wide VPN that's gonna run through that Tor network. Now keep in mind, the Tor network is designed to offer you anonymity and normally it does so via services like the Tor browser where it's actively done in a way to blend users to make them look the same. So not only are you connecting to the anonymity network, but you're connecting to it looking like everybody else. When you're doing this and you just use it as a VPN, you're gonna lose a lot of that benefit of blending and looking like everyone else. You're just gonna get the benefit of the anonymity network. And over on desktop, you have things like Hunix and Tails OS that also route you through the Tor network via uh, the entire operating system. My point here is that you can actually route through the Tor network somewhat like a VPN, but keep in mind Tor is pretty slow to use, so you're still probably going to be better off uh, maybe with a uh, Windscribe or Proton when it comes to speed. Kind of a side tangent to this whole free VPN concept is tons of open source projects that are entirely free are some of the most trusted solutions out there in certain capacity. Drive encryption. There's a million paid options, and ultimately what I trust the most is Veracrypt, which is entirely free and open source. So it's less to me about whether or not something costs money, and more about the context of why something costs money or is free. Like today, for example, uh, the projects are free because they're like entirely open source projects or they're community run projects or they're uh, limited free tiers that are designed to eventually make you a paid customer, uh, which covers the cost of the free ones. You know, this isn't rocket science and things can be free without a huge number of gotchas, kind of like this video. I mean, you're probably watching this for free and it's brought to you thanks to people on our Patreon, people who give us Monero, our sponsors, Libra Pay, Merch, uh, our Go Incognito course, like all of these things are the reason why we can give you free videos. And so if it wasn't for those people, we couldn't give you this free content. So again, context matters, people. While something being free should maybe spark your curiosity, there are definitely situations where you can use something for free and not be the product. Are there any other free services that you use um, that you can pretty much share with people why it's free and why you still trust it? definitely leave it in the description. There's like a million of them in the privacy community. And again, shout out to Denota for being our first gold video sponsor on our new sponsorship program. You're awesome. Thank you.